Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Trap. This film was directed by M. Night Shyamalan. It has been nice seeing M. Night Shyamalan slowly return to form over the last several years, return to like that comfortable suspense thriller mode that he's so known for. He's comfortable in it and you know there was a time in his career when I was afraid that we we had lost him, especially when he started doing movies that were more kind of like blockbuster mainstream. His reputation suffered but you know not enough. He bounced back and you know I have a, an immense amount of respect for that. And with Trap we have another little tasty morsel that he is offering us here. It is very light, it is very pulpy, just, you know, suspense fair. You don't take it too seriously. I've always seen M. Night Shyamalan as, you know, he seems like a very chill, kind of nice guy. He's, he's very playful in his movies. Certainly Shyamalan lacks the sophistication, the elevation of somebody like Alfred Hitchcock, but that's normal. Hitchcock is a, a very high standard, but um, yeah, I feel like Shyamalan is always considering his audience and always trying to keep things interesting. I'll start with some of the things that I, I do like about the film. Shyamalan obviously has been at this for a very long time, and I think that that, that shows just in the craft of, of his films. Even when the plot of the characters start to feel a little flimsy at times, it's like you can always count on him to have a really a great visual eye. I really like the cinematography here. There are some fantastic shots that are compelling and they are placed right at the perfect point when you need to kind of kick up the tension. Yeah, there's some great split diopter shots going on. There's a lot of meta things going on here too and I kind of wish they had leaned a little bit more into that. You know, there's tons of visual Hitchcock references going on here. As an example, Haley Mills is in this and I was like, really, Pollyanna. All right. But yeah, they're kind of, you know, referencing Hitchcock and like the Kim Novak bun, the swirl, you know, from Vertigo. It's also very Hitchcocky in the idea of having your main character be the villain. Um, that's a really interesting concept. And, you know, in order to pull that off, you have to like the main character initially so that he can transition you know, easily from protagonist to antagonist. So that means for a while in the movie you have to find all of these little shifting obstacles. Different characters are going to take on the antagonistic role to Josh Harnett, you know, the main character here. That constantly allows the central tension in the movie to evolve properly. I also like that the movie, I like the environment that the movie takes place in. The idea of you know, like having your main character in this big event, like a, a big crowd. Normally in psychological thrillers, they tend to be a little bit more intimate. And yet this one, again, this is a very Hitchcockian sort of thing. It's like you're trying to find the focal point and you're trying to hone in when there are all these variables going on in this big party situation. It's difficult to choreograph, but if you can do it, it's beautiful. And when Hitchcock did it, it was like ballet. This one, maybe not quite so balletic, but you know, I, I get the inclination. There was a while in the movie where I found myself fighting a lot of the instincts where I was like, you know, wouldn't it have been better if we had waited, you know, delayed the tension of knowing that our main character is the villain? You don't necessarily have to delay it until the third act of the film, but I felt like they could have delayed crucial information to help with the tension. But then as the movie went on, I was like, no, I actually kind of like the way they're doing it. Josh Harnett is great in this movie because no matter what he does, even when it is kind of very far-fetched, I should say, not kind of, very far-fetched. It's like you you still want to follow him and you always believe him. He's interesting. Kind of like American roots, uh, reliable type of actor where like you sense an honesty in him, a grounded quality. I like that they played him up as kind of like the cringy dad embarrassing the daughter. He's taking her to this big pop concert and she's she's embarrassed by him, obviously, and he keeps playing it up. You know, all of that is is, is cute. While the writing is less than stellar, it's, it's the acting. It's like you buy into their rapport. I also think the movie does a good job of knowing when to, to tighten up the screws, uh, to know when to deviate from one perspective to another. Again, that can be kind of difficult to maintain an audience interest. And overall, I think the film did all right with it. I wasn't fully on board with it all the time, but I just, I found myself going, mm, you know, maybe I'm a little skeptical here, but I, I do want to see where this goes. I think for a while it was easy to, you know, point to M. Night Shyamalan as the plot twist guy to kind of look at those gimmicks and to seek them out, to only want to go see a Shyamalan movie to look for uh, the plot twist. But I don't think that's why his career has endured. I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? It was more, how are we going to arrive at the conclusion? You know, because it's like, you know, I think you can tell from the beginning. It's like, all right, we, we have an idea of, you know, the character trajectory here. We, we have an idea of what the conclusion is going to be in some form. Even with the tension in the movie, like in the, in the concert scenes, as an example, there's kind of like a, like a meandering quality to it. And you're not quite sure what's going on tonally. And yet again, it's like, you can always feel the end goal in sight. He knows how to maintain a certain level of cohesion so that he isn't losing his audience. And weirdly, I found that the movie 
kind of slowly started to grow into itself as it as it went. When we start to shift the perspective again, you know, like from Josh Harnett to somebody else and we're following them for a while, it's not like Shyamalan is just pulling it out of his ass. It's like, you know, these characters, it was all set up for us. You can see it in the peripherals and it's slowly building. But sadly, it's like the movie just wasn't there for me fully. There was a lot of the time, again, especially tonally, I was confused, particularly in the first half of the movie. I just, I didn't know what they were going for. I can sense he wants to touch on like the psychological aspects of our main character, but yet he's not quite knowing how to merge that with the, with the black comedy. There were times in this movie, and I am not kidding, it's like the energy of the acting was so strange and, and very pointed. I started to think, you know, maybe this movie is crazier than we thought. Maybe this is all meant to be like a, a simulation. I was thinking way outside the box. Of course, that is, is not the case. And so ultimately, yeah, I'm just a little bit perplexed by kind of the awkwardness of the humor, especially as it's trying to break through the, the tension barriers. Yes, the movie does border a lot of the time on slapstick. The premise, even though it is kind of interesting as just like a, an initial concept, it, it's ridiculous. So far-fetched. So the only way I think to be able to buy into it, suspension of disbelief, is to have that, that cheekiness, that sense of humor. But just the execution feels off and just in the writing, in the characters, there's just a lot of incompetence. The midsection of the movie, it tends to be just kind of this long cat and mouse chase between Josh Harnett and, and the police. I feel like they relied too much on that to progress the plot forward, where I feel like we could have layered in more interesting uh, angles to the Josh Harnett character, try to understand him a little bit more psychologically. If we could understand what really makes him tick on a deeper level, I think that third act could have been so compelling, so emotionally interesting. The whole time it feels like we're trying to find the vulnerability in him and we're trying to find the weaknesses in him as, as a villain. Um, but again, I, by the end of it, I don't feel like we really understood anything about him. And so it's hard to feel that satisfaction when ultimately he never really loses that that level of control. So yes, this movie's a little bit messy for me overall, but you know, it had some it had some intriguing things about it, some unique things about it that yeah, initially I fought the instinct and the more I got into it, I was like, hmm, there's something here. Again, this is just like a little tasty morsel. I wish it were more complex, more interesting, but you know, it is what it is. I see this as just kind of some basic escapism. I think this works really well. It's just like a fun stream on a Friday night with some buddies. I like that we have a, a reliable director like this who can, you know, constantly churn these types of movies out. It's it's kind of nice, but um yeah, so that is my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website as always. It is deepfocuslens.com. I'm an artist. I do commission portraits and I sell prints of my work. If that is something that you're interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a question about a commission or a print, you can email me. My email is in the description box below as well. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons who are great guys. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome to all the new members. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below, as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.